All right, what's going on everybody? Gunner here. Uh, for part of this masterclass, I want to do just a really quick short video on how to properly cast white forward fly lines. Hope you guys will check it out. Uh, so let's dive in. Uh, basically, what I'm going to use to demonstrate this is the Echo Micro Practice Rod. So Echo is the brand, Micro Practice Rod. Uh, this is the line that it comes with, and it's basically a long belly fly line, which is basically what I'm going to use to demonstrate a double taper line, because if you look at the line, it's the same diameter from here all the way to the little tip, which is basically going to be your front taper slash leader, right? So it's a really, really, really long belly fly line. Now, I also have in the grass over there the double hull adapter kit. And if the, I don't know if you can see it in frame, but it's really, really, really short, and then it has running line all the way behind it. That's basically your modern fly line. That's like 90% of the fly lines produced in our industry are gonna be weight forward fly lines because they're salt, they're fresh, they're still water, they're trout. It is the most efficient kind of aerodynamic tool for the job. So that's why everything's gravitated towards that. But there is a correct way to cast them. Now, I need to kind of give some context here because I'm not talking about really short, you know, 15 foot cast, delicate dry fly type stuff. We're talking about a little bit of distance here because that's where the change happens. When you're trying to achieve distance longer than the head length of the fly line, you need to do something correct. And it has to do with the amount of line that you have out of the rod. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate this real quick and I hope this helps you guys out. So double taper fly lines, you have a front taper, you have a level fly line, and then on the reel, technically, past this end, I'd have a rear taper. So it's symmetrical. The line is the same on the back as it is in the front. The line is the same thickness all the way for the whole fly line for basically 100 foot or however long they are. <clears throat> now when you're casting short, the casting styles are the same between weight forward and double taper fly lines. It really doesn't matter much if you're inside the head. But as you get that line out and you start casting more and more line, the thing about a double taper line is I can keep going and I can keep going and I can keep slipping line and I can just carry line. I can just continue to carry the line because the line is fat. So it transfers the energy all the way down. Now, let's jump to the, the weight forward fly line, the double hull adapter kit. And then, let me show you what happens if I keep trying to slip and slip and slip and carry, carry, carry more line. All right, so you guys probably can't see the line in my hand, right? It's really thin, hard monofilament. Running line, it's supposed to be low profile, it's supposed to have less friction through the guy, it's supposed to be less air resistant, it's supposed to shoot, right? And you can see I have a ridiculously short fly line, a ridiculously short fly line, like a weight forward 30 foot head condensed streamer fly line, right? That's why this is applicable information to the class here. <clears throat> and so that casting stroke for this, and basically casting that double taper line about the head length within the head length is the same. But as this goes out, Watch what happens if I keep trying to carry this. Oh, that looks really ugly. Oh, that's really ugly. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Right, that looks like crap. It looked like poop. What happened? We got into this really thin stuff and you're trying to basically create a zero slack system when you have all this slack line and then you're trying to transfer the energy from this little thin bit into that big fat bit and it gets really hard. And the weight of that head that's loading the rod, it gets farther and farther away from the rod tip. But it's the rod tip that tells the line where to go. So the farther away that stuff gets, the more wonky it gets, the less accurate it gets, and the less this rod tip is telling it exactly what to do. Now the way to properly cast a weight forward fly line is to keep it nice and close to that head. And then to, woo, there she goes. It's like a little 40 foot cast with some yarn and some string on a four foot rod, right? But the, you shoot the head. That's, that's how you cast a weight forward fly line with any sort of distance on it. And so to properly cast the weight forward line, it's not about slipping and slipping and slipping. You see that head's getting farther and farther away from me. What you need to do is you need to get that head basically just outside the rod tip with enough room to haul just outside the rod tip with enough room to haul. So you're talking about the, the head plus, I don't know, six, seven, eight feet. And then you shoot the fly line. You let it go. You transfer all the energy and you let the momentum of that condensed head carry and pull all the thin running line out to the distance of the target. If you have a weight forward fly line and you really struggle to get distance, one of the things you might be doing is carrying too much darn line. All you need to do is get the head out, 
plus about six, seven feet so that you can really draw your, your double hull through the guides and, and make sure you're maximizing the efficiency of that head unit. And then you shoot it to distance. Now, let me show you how that kind of applies to modern fly fishing. Let me show you my actual rod <laughs> and line setup. So this is the St. Croix Mojo Bass Fly. This is the eight weight, it's a seven, uh, seven foot 11 inch rod. And then I have a Rio outbound short shooting head. And then I have a grip shooter on here. And the really cool thing about this combo and a lot of modern fly lines have this, but the head and the running line are different colors. So you have a visual cue of how much line is outside the guides. So check this out. Now what I'll do instead of carrying and carrying and carrying line is I'll get that color transition just outside the rod tip. So it's like eight, eight feet out the rod tip, six feet out the rod tip, so that when I haul, I'm really close to that fly line, right? It's not way the heck out there, but I'm pretty darn close to it. And then I can just make my back cast and my forward cast, and she's gone. Right? There goes 90 feet of fly line or 100 feet of fly line. <laughs> it's just gone. And you don't have to sit here and cast and cast and cast and do your little dance moves to try to get that fly line out because the more line you slip, the less control you have and the worse off you're going to be. So, hope that helped you guys out. Hope that really breaks down uh, the simplicity of casting a weight forward fly line, how they're designed to be used to achieve distance versus your kind of tra traditional double taper lines. And, uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Thanks.